So let's move ahead with SharePoint quick questions and answers video series and let's take up question number 10. How can we implement behind code ASPX pages in SharePoint? In the previous session, we had implemented a simple ASPX page, but that ASPX page had an inline code. It did not have a behind code. Now you must be thinking that isn't it easy to implement a behind code ASPX page in SharePoint? I mean to say compile the ASPX page and paste the DLL, the behind code DLL and the ASPX page in the directory and run it. No, when it comes in implementing behind code ASPX pages in SharePoint, it is a bit different. So what we'll do, what we'll do in this session is that we'll try to do implement a simple behind code or we'll try to display a simple behind code ASPX page in the SharePoint virtual directory and see that how it differs from normal implementation of ASPX pages. When we speak about behind code ASPX pages, there are two sections in that. One is the UI part of it, which has your UI components like the text boxes, probably a look and feel using the table, your background color, etc. And the second part is your behind code, which basically has a logic to manipulate those UI components. Now what happens in normal ASP.NET behind code is that you can just use these two together, compile it and publish it and it works perfectly well. In other words, the ASP.NET compiler compiles a DLL of the behind code and you can just paste it wherever you want to uh, publish it and it works perfectly well. But in SharePoint, it's a bit different. In SharePoint, we need to register the behind code in GAC. So what we need to do is that we need to prepare a separate class library in SharePoint, which is basically using, which is basically registered in GAC, which needs to be basically registered in GAC. So what I've done is that I have prepared a separate class library and this class library does nothing. It basically manipulates two labels given by the UI site LBL site question and LBL site answer with some text. Now this whole library is coded in isolation and what I'm doing is I'm basically compiling this. Once I've compiled it, what you need to do is you need to go to the GAC, use the GAC util and register this library. So now this has been added successfully to cache or to the GAC, right? Now you need to, the, now in order to link this uh, GAC install DLL in the code behind dot ASPX page, you need to, you need to get the public key token of the GAC DLL. So go to C windows assembly, right click, go to properties and you can find the public key token value here. Just select this, copy it and paste it here. Now your UI code is referring the DLL. Now this is a change uh, change from the way we do our normal coding. In normal ASPX behind code, what you do is you put the behind code page name here and it works perfectly well. But in SharePoint, we need to uh, do this in a very isolated manner where we actually need to code the library different and we need to, uh, uh, where we need to code the library different and then link the library and then, uh, and then register the library in the GAC and use the public key token to link it with the ASPX file. The other point to remember is we also need to have strong name in order to do the registration. So that's one more point which I'd missed out. So you need to also give a strong key name before you use a GAC util. So now once you have done both of these things, you can take this simple page code behind dot ASPX and paste it to the templates directory, right? The template slash layout directory. So C program files, common files, Microsoft shared, web server extension 12 template slash layout i have pasted the file here and now you can run this file and you can see that the behind code is executing so you can say that it's a bit tedious but i think on the way the share uh, by uh, the way how sharepoint is architected this is the way to go so in order to register a code behind page aspx page in sharepoint we need to register the behind code in gac we need to code the behind code in a separate assembly and link it using the public key token and then only the page will run so you can find the you can find these sample codes uh, in questpointvd.com and if you brought the dvd if you bought the dvd of sharepoint you will find it in in the source code folder so what you can do is you can you can take both you can take this whole project compile the library in a different manner register it using gac paste the aspx page in the templates directory and then run it to see how it works. At this moment, it is not doing anything big. But as we move ahead, 
we will be doing some complicated code behind implementation where we will need to understand that you need to understand how SharePoint runs the ASPX code behind. I hope this uh, tutorial was useful and see you in the coming next questions.